Welcome to the second day of the webinar series. In the morning session, we have two speakers, Dr. Arijit Malik and Dr. Piblak Manna. Now I request Professor Prasenjit Kaur to chair this session and introduce the first speaker of the day. Okay, there is some problem in sound. So I will I will introduce Dr. Arijit Malik again. Dr. Arijit Malik completed his MSc in chemistry in 2009 from MIT Roorkee. After that, he finished his PhD from NCL Pune in 2015. And then he moved to Kaust for the uh, postdoctoral fellowship. And he worked there up until 2019. And then currently he is working as JSPS postdoctoral fellow in Kyoto University, Japan. So with this short introduction, I would like to uh, uh, invite Dr. Malik uh, to give a talk on crystalline porous material for the detection of toxic amines. Dr. Malik. Can I audible? Yeah. Yes, yes, you can go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'm very much uh, uh, happy and uh, also feeling honored to uh, pre present my work uh, here. Actually, it is a very uh, great moment for me because I can again meet my professors uh, and um, my senior, junior, my friends. So, uh, especially I would like to thank Professor Justin Thomas uh, sir to uh, invite me to give a talk uh, in this webinar. So, I'll uh, st let me start. So, today I'll talk about the crystalline porous material for detection of toxic amines. And uh, firstly, I'll introduce myself. Uh, uh, I joined IIT Roorkee at, at 2007. Uh, I was from a very beautiful place, part of the West Bengal, this, the area is Shundarban. Then, uh, as uh, uh, you already know that uh, uh, I did PhD from uh, NCL Pune and then I uh, did a uh, postdoc uh, postdoctoral uh, fellowship. Uh, I got uh, in uh, coast, uh, Saudi Arabia, then I did postdoc. Uh, I'm doing postdoc in Kyushu University, Japan. So first of all, uh, I cannot stop myself to share my the uh, IIT Ruki, uh, uh, the memories. Uh, that was a, a life changing memory for me, you can say, because uh, I was in a very small city. Then first time I came out from uh, the West Bengal to uh, uh, out of the state. And at that time I was feeling very, uh, the first one, two days, it was very difficult for me. I don't have friends and anything, but when the time I joined uh, the chemistry uh, classes and I joined the group, uh, the chemistry department group, then I got my friends from different part of India uh, with different language, different culture. Then I met my professors and my very good seniors. Then within few, one week, I've become the part of the uh, chemistry department uh, family. So it was a very uh, nice moment. And my research journey started uh, from IIT Roorkee. I did my uh, project work uh, with Professor uh, Malanath Madam. And uh, she uh, actually uh, encouraged me uh, to do research on porous material and uh, the hydrogen storage and all these things. So that came, uh, came out as a publication as well. So that from there, to till now, I'm continuing on uh, the uh, research on porous materials. Today, I'll talk about the detection of the amines. 
So the content of my presentation will be some general introduction of the materials. And then I'll talk about the de detection of I mean, using the photochromic material. There will be two parts actually. And the second part, I'll uh, discuss about the detection of aliphatic and aromatic amines and followed by conclusion. So uh, in industry, the porous materials are very important material uh, to uh, separate or capture or doing catalysis. But previously, people um, are using the porous carbons, which are also um, a, an interesting type of porous material, uh, which have some advantage and disadvantage as well. Like uh, these carbons are uh, cheap, but the problem is that it doesn't have uh, uniform porosity. So then uh, um, people uh, um, uh, go for the geolites. Geolites are also good materials, but it has also some disadvantage, like you cannot tune the porosity, even it is have uniform porosity. So then people are interested in metal organic framework, covalent organic framework, organic cages, metal organic cages. These are all different type of porous materials. And today I'll talk about my work on based on the metal organic framework. So what is the metal organic framework? I uh, describe it um, shortly. So a metal organic framework are porous crystalline solids where the metal ions and the uh, link linker, organic linker, like here you can see this is the metal ion and organic linker are self-assembled to form a three-dimensional porous structure, which will have some different functionality based on the desired uh, applications. It can be, the, this porous material can be used for several applications like drug delivery, gas storage, uh, clean energy, catalysis, sensing. So today I'll uh, mainly talk about the sensing, especially amine sensing. So uh, generally two types of amines are uh, observed in uh, two types of amine. One type is the biogenic amine, which is uh, generally present in our biological system, like the different amino acids, serotonin, dopamine, all these type of amines. And also there is other type of amines, which are volatile organic amines, which are, uh, you can say, uh, carcinogenic and skin irritants and dangerous pollutant as well, like uh, aniline and nicotine, they are very uh, dangerous chemical. And so we need to detect this amine. So the, why? Because uh, it had importance in uh, health, health safety, and pollution control, like the hydrazine, uh, are used for jet fuel. So, uh, so it pollutes the air. And food safety, medical diagnosis, and chemical industries are uh, the like aniline are used in dye industry. So, the uh, detection of amine is really important. And here I'll uh, show my work, frozen based method for detecting of amine. There are uh, several other methods are there like NMR and other techniques, but there is some advantage over the fluorescent based method. Where the, it is, uh, it have high sensitivity, short response time, and we can do the solid as well as liquid phase detection. And uh, the visualization is very easy. And the system is very uh, easy to handle. And it is also low cost. And we uh, um, uh, choose the morph based system for sensing because it has some advantages. Like, uh, as I told you, we can change the linkers, like the metal center and the linker, the organic part we can change and we get the desirable pore size. And the most important thing is that organic. Uh, chromophore so when they uh, in solid state they get aggregated but in MOF the linkers are placed in a particular distance and separated from each other so uh, we have uh, retained their uh, illumination property I will also discuss in the during the work discussion also these materials uh, will have the thermal and chemical stability and most important, they are crystalline in nature. So we can know the orientation and the bond angle, bond length interactions. So we can know the science behind all these things. So they, that is the advantage. I'll come to my work. Uh, here, 
on the uh, on that sensing purpose we, we first choose a chromophoric uh, linker here you can see this is the naphthalene diamide ndi based a uh, linker uh, you know, center and we connect four carboxylic acid with that so that it can bind with metal like magnesium calcium all this and it gives a nice pore structure and here you can see due to this chromophore present inside we can get a lot of properties like solvatochromism means it can sense the different solvent with different polarity with different visual color chains it's all are reversible so within 60 seconds you can see that and also uh, if you put this material in sunlight or um, a particular wavelength light it changes to dark I means black and when we will put inside dark or in oxygen atmosphere is come back to its original color i'll uh, explain you why this happened and also we can use this material for amine sensing why because the uh, this uh, ndi core is electron uh, deficient the pi electrons are conjugation with four carboxylic acid so the the core become electron deficient so our idea used for that since the amines are electron rich so uh, the it can be useful. So uh, first we can see the how this solvatochromism uh, works. So generally the all the solvents are in uh, a normal eye. We can see all are colorless, but they have the polarity difference. So uh, to detect uh, them by uh, by using MOF will be very useful. By here you can see. With ethanol, it's a uh, yellow, but in DMF, it's a dark brown. And we have uh, measured the band gap of all this material, and we have seen that with increasing band gap, the um, we can get a nice trend of increasing polarity. Also, we, we are getting increasing band gap. And this why because these um, materials have nice pores, and it can it doesn't do an, a chemical reaction. It's go inside and interact with the chromophore. It gives this to this color. Now I'll come to the amine added sensing. As I told, this uh, NDI code is electron deficient. So, so when the electron rich uh, amine molecules come you know, towards the center, it's do the charge transfer. And this charge transfer complex shows a distinct color change. We can see in normal light. Where you can see here, the different functionality doesn't show any color. But when we are using some amines, it shows the color. And another inter interesting thing is that it can show size selectivity. So the small amine, which can easily, uh, because the MOFs are, have a particular pore size, and this inside the pore, the small amine can easily go inside. But the bigger amine, like uh, triethylamine and, and um, aniline, they fill uh, the hindrance. That's why it shows uh, you know, the, the uh, sensing is more prominent in case of hydrazine or ethylene but the bigger amp are not there they shows the color sense but not so prominent and this is uh, as i told it was uh, doing the charge transfer and so the the the, the sensing was via luminescent quenching method and uh, and we get, got a trend over the size selective so that was that paper was uh, highlighted in chemical science, and I will come to the another part, the photochromic part. So as I told you before, it was uh, if we put this material in sunlight, it uh, generates radical. How uh, we we understand from the EPR measurement, we get the peak uh, of single electron. So the NDI uh, radical generates, and it gives the distinct color change. And we use this technology uh, technique to do a inkless printing using this photochromic MOF. So I'll uh, describe it uh, very nicely. In general, uh, the laser printer, there is a laser source and some ink source, and there is a heater. So, uh, but if we don't use any ink, then the uh, it will be low cost. And also, this, uh, as I told, it is a reversible process. So we can do photochromic printing as well as uh, eras erasing. So uh, if we expose to um, oxygen or keep it in dark, 
that printing will uh, vanish. So that will be very useful for daily uh, use like newspaper, where we use one day, uh, one day and next day we throw. But uh, uh, this uh, te technology where we coated the paper with morph material, and we know in presence of light, it changes color. So, uh, um, so if we put the light in a particular words like A, B, C, D, or we can uh, give any st structure of light, the paper will be printed according to that light format. And we have uh, shown here that we can see, see a very intense uh, printing we can read. Or an interesting part is that we can fold the paper, it's a flexible, so mop will not come out from the paper. And even uh, we can do a lot of things like uh, here you can see we can draw a picture and this is after 12 hours, uh, it is still uh, visible. And it is, here it is showing it is after erase. So if you keep in the dark, the, it will be erased. And here it is showing after fourth round of uh, printing. So you can actually uh, print so many times. And here it is showing that it can also, the barcode, the sensor, you know, the electronic uh, scanner can easily scan these uh, barcodes. So these are prominent printing we can use. Now I'll come to my second part of our work. Here, uh, previously I have shown uh, the amine sensing in quenching method. The, but um, another important method will be if we, we can do the frozen enhancement. And also previously I have shown that the sensing we have done in acetonitrile medium. But if the uh, sensing can be more prominent if we can do in aqueous medium. So keeping all this thing in our mind, we uh, design another metal organic framework where we choose the zirconium hexanuclear cluster as metal nodes because uh, these zirconium oxygen bonds are very strong. So uh, it forms a very chemically stable uh, framework, which is the thermally and it will be stable in water. And we use a linear linker so that we get a FCU topology uh, with some um, chromophoric unit, third diazol unit at a speed. And when we uh, got a very nice crystalline material, which have a FCU topology. So uh, this is FCU is the face center cube. If you think about all metal nodes are the centers. And it has two uh, type of pores. One is octahedral pore and another is the tetrahedral case. Uh, it's around 25 angstrom case and uh, the tetrahedral case you can see here, it's around 15. And these windows are around 10 angstrom. So the, the small, the amines can easily go inside and interact with the framework and it can give the detection. So uh, here the interesting thing is that if you see the morph in solution gives the uh, you know, luminous and at least 65 nanometer uh, light source. Also the linker also gives the luminous in solution. But interestingly in solid state, the linker doesn't show any luminous, the morph shows. So as I told, the, the linker actually aggregated uh, in the solid phase, but in MOF, they are separated from each other and it's the luminescent property is still like similar to the in solution. And also it have nice stability around 400 degrees Celsius. And these MOFs are very highly porous as I told before and around uh, have surface area around 2,300 meters square per ground. And we use this material for detection of of amine. And we uh, interestingly find that there is a unique uh, uh, selective detection over aliphatic amine over aromatic amine. So aliphatic amines like methyl amine shows luminescent enhancement, but the aromatic amines like aniline or paraphenylene diamine, uh, they, all aromatic amine shows the quenching. So uh, we uh, try to understand why this is happens and what is the actual mechanism going on in, inside that. So uh, I'll come to that in next slides. And then, but before that, we, we have shown the nicotine detection using the same technique because nicotine also have a aliphatic amine center. And this is the first report. Nicotine has been detected by other method like electrochemical method, other method. But uh, luminescent enhancement method, that was the first report where we can 
so the nicotine can be detected by luminescent uh, enhancing method. The nicotine is, you know, one of the uh, carcinogenic material who is present in tobacco and uh, which uh, affect our, our different part of our body started, started starting from lung to heart and everywhere. So this is the very important to detect this uh, small molecule by uh, fluorescence enhancement method. And we can uh, see that we can, the detection limit uh, is around 280, nano, 280 nanomolar concentration. And uh, now I will come to the um, uh, detailed understanding how we can understand that what is the mechanism going on. So we have seen the uh, in different solvent, in acetonitrile, ethanol and water, where we have seen the, the detection in water is prominent rather than other. And also we have seen that the, uh, only the linker doesn't show any uh, prominent fluorescent uh, 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 sensing, but in MOF it is showing very high sensing. So uh, there is something going on inside water, and the there is some interaction with the um, uh, amine and the framework. And we have seen the uh, lifetime where the we can get very uh, long fluorescent uh, lifetime uh, in presence of amine. So uh, there is two way. Uh, it may be the the amine uh, pH, which is uh, uh, regulating this uh, sensing, or uh, the amine structure. So that we try in a different pH medium, we try to pH buffer medium we took and try to check the luminescence. And we have seen that there is no significant change in uh, luminescence, but when we use a ammonium chloride where the ammonium plus and the NH4 plus is present and his, it shows very high uh, sensing. So the um, generally the aliphatic amine have very high pKa value and in water they get protonated and it's from ammonium ion. And these ammonium ions are maybe the main responsible for doing interaction with this linker. So um, to confirm this, we did synthesize another MOF, which have uh, the similar uh, length, but there is no heteroatom to interact with the amine. It's also the it's anthracene, and this anthracene doesn't have any heteroatom, and also it forms a similar structure with similar uh, FCU topology, but uh, there is no interaction sites. So and it is also luminescent. And we have seen that the after addition of amine, there is no change in luminescence. So we confirm that that this amine is going inside the framework and interacting with the the thiazole functionality. And then we try to do the theoretical uh, um, measurement where uh, we try to understand the interaction of the amine and the framework. And we have seen when the Amine is uh, doing a hydrogen bond with this thiodiazole uh, group. The the motion of the benzene ring is res restricted. So the here is the the change in the hydral angle from the ground state and excited state. And we have seen after two amine, uh, it's interacting. It's the dihedral angle of the um, uh, rings is uh, change is minimum. So the when the the dihedral angle the uh, the uh, the ring is completely near to planar. The the pi electron on delocalization happen faster, and that gives the uh, the sensing. And so we can visualize the structure where it has a pocket, and when the ammonium uh, and um, are the amines with uh, uh, ammonium ion is coming here, and it's uh, doing a interaction with the all heteroatom. And that's why it restricts its rotation. It's similar type with the crown ether type, which bind with the ammonium ions. So I can conclude my work that we made a very stable material, which can uh, do the uh, uh, selective detection between, between the aliphatic and aromatic amines. Also, this uh, an aliphatic amine can detect around very low uh, detection limit, uh, around 66 nanomolar. Also, we can detect the nicotine, which is uh, very carcinogenic. 
and uh, that work was highlighted in ACLS literatures, uh, also in Jack's spotlight. So I'd like to thank uh, Professor Malana to give me inspiration in this work and um, give my motivation. Also, my uh, PhD professor, Dr. Rahul Banerjee, and uh, postdoc pro professor, Muhammad Idaudi, and Professor Nabohu Yanai. Also, they are my collaborators. So, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Malik, for this nice presentation. And this, uh, especially your MOF work is very much appreciated by the audience. Uh, okay. So now uh, I would like to invite some questions from the audience. Uh, maybe a couple of questions. Thank so you. If there are any questions from, uh, from the audience, please. It seems that there is no questions from the audience. So uh, I, will, I would like to ask one quick questions. Okay. Uh, maybe a single question. Uh, in your uh, first part uh, with uh, Perilin uh, PTCDI. Okay. Uh, how do you, uh, there, is, there must be some stacking interaction between uh, yes, uh, the uh, in case of here actually the this due to this uh, electron deficient system, it's do the charge transfer with the amines. Amines lone pair um, actually uh, um, comes closer to this uh, group and do this uh, interaction charge transfer. And if you uh, use some other aromatic amine like uh, aniline and paraphernaline diamine, there will be more pi pi interactions. But uh, when the MOF forms, we have seen that uh, there is a uh, distinct, uh, um, there is a difference uh, from um, the distance between one uh, uh, ring to another ring. So, um, Okay, there is a question from audience uh, from Ramakrishna Hallar. He asked, how can you use this material in oil and gas industry in detection? So uh, in case of uh, oil and gas industries, if there is uh, um, uh, some amine related product coming out, then in that case, uh, we can, um, uh, the trace amount in, in the, it's only for detection purpose so trace amount of, of uh, the waste uh, if it is coming out so we can um, put it in water or any organic um, as i told the first morph was useful for any organic solvent and the second morph was useful for aqueous medium so any medium we can uh, take and do the uh, cross and sensing by using this method so that is the so his next question is: Can you can you store the gas inside yeah. this mouth? Yeah, the uh, I didn't um, show the this property here, but this this as I told, this mo molecule have a two thousand three hundred meter square uh, uh, surface area, so it can do lot of gas uh, um, adsorption, like uh, especially the methane adsorption and. Uh, um, other hydrocarbon uh, adsorption and also we can do some some type of branch and unbranch hydrocarbon separation as well so uh, now from that uh, from avni chauhan he is asking what is the durability of gas durability of the framework or the uh, guest i think yeah. for the gas storage he is talking about gas storage so uh, these are uh, actually generally happens by physical interactions. There is no chemical interaction of the gas and the uh, framework. And these are very uh, rigid and stable framework. So you can do so many cycles of adsorption and uh, desorption. So th they are physically adsorbed on the surface of the pore wall. 
so so many times so uh, i have uh, no i know in uh, our previous lab they did few thousand times so it is stable so it is you can, based on the stability of the framework you can do uh, several cycles okay the last question i think i will get the last question from aman kumar is asking what about the reusability of mops so oh, the similar uh, question uh, reusability so uh, as i told this uh, the it's due to the physical adsorption there is no chemical reaction going on so we can uh, reuse so many times uh, based on the stability of the different framework so here i have shown this zirconium uh, based frameworks they are pretty stable you can do so many cycles so the, the number of cycles do you have any idea about how many numbers of cycles can you use this for sensing for sensing uh, for sensing we we have did around 20 times it was fine 20 cycle we didn't do further but around 20 cycle we did it was the pxrd and other sensing property was fine okay okay thank you dr malik for your nice presentation um with this i will uh, end this session not this session i will end this talk and then i'll go for the next talk um thank you very much dr malik so our next talk is uh it is giving biplab manna dr biplab manna he is our alumni he received his msc from mit rorke in 2010 after that he did his phd from iiscr pune and then after finishing his phd he moved to japan for the postdoctoral fellowship in the university of tokyo so with this short introduction i would like to invite dr manna for his presentation on the topic of responsive passes of ionic mofs dr manna Yes. Okay. Uh, can you see my uh, slides? Yes, yes. You can okay. go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, and thank you, my professors, uh, particularly uh, uh, for inviting me for this uh, nice uh, webinar series in IIT Roorkee Chemistry Almanai. And I remember my moments in uh, my department uh, and my uh, uh, fellow member, my senior, just talk, uh, just uh, before me talk, and uh, yeah, uh, it was a nice moment. And I uh, thank you all for our professor, and particularly JT sir, uh, the, uh, Thomas sir, for inviting me. So I'll uh, with this uh, brief, uh, uh, I'll start my uh, talk. So this is the responsive facets of ionic MOF. Uh, and uh, uh, as you see, uh, this work was published long back. Uh, I mean, my PhD work I am uh, presenting here. Uh, first of all, I would like to acknowledge uh, my all lab mates and all um, uh, and the chemistry department and of uh, main building. <laughs> I, I was just uh, amazed by this. Uh, and my uh, project supervisor uh, in MSc, Professor Yuki Singh, and Thomas sir, and my PhD supervisor, Sujit uh, Kekho, Sinaizer Pune. So with this, uh, I will start my talk. So uh, I will uh, start very basic with, with very basic idea uh, about uh, how about molecular recognition. Because as, it, as you know, this molecular recognition is very well known in uh, and uh, and particularly because uh, this is the fundamental establishment of the sensing recognition and biological uh, thing, the understanding of the biological thing. So 
the uh, molecular recognition is a uh, if, if you remember uh, Emil Fischer, the scientist Emil Fischer, uh, who was uh, trying to establishing the uh, enzyme kinetics, enzyme uh, mechanism, that lock and key model. Uh, as you see, the lock you see uh, in the figure here, lock is uh, there is a cell uh, which, can, which can bind to the key. So then it can form lock and key complex or uh, complex. So this is very highly responsive process and energetically pro energetically favorable process because this process involves uh, uh, this process involves the uh, particular recognition of molecules, which is of very importance in every aspect. You can say in living organism, uh, other system as well. So further, uh, this idea was developed by these three pioneer, uh, Donald J. Cram. Jamie Lane and Charles Peterson, and of the Krypton kind of molecules uh, and uh, kind of uh, uh, host case complex of this potassium crown ether, and they uh, got the Nobel Prize uh, in, in 1987. So that time it was very, very uh, hot topic. And from that also, it is coming this topic that recognition of molecules is of very primarily very important. So it is uh, how a enzyme molecule is working. You can see in the nature, just this is a schematic representation. And uh, there is the induced fish structure of the enzyme that it can fit with the proper guest molecules, guest in the sense of uh, substrate. And this induced fit uh, model is a, uh, you can say the enzyme structure. So then they, uh, come from the complex and they uh, kind of, so the main idea behind this is that uh, the enzyme is particularly binding to a subset. So the idea is uh, here. So, so hence it has been well understood that molecular shape deformable species, because this molecular shape deformable species is very, very important as it early understood that for enzyme, and other thing for recognition as well. Uh, with this, and here I am introducing a uh, metal organic framework because I will uh, try to correlate the essence of this molecular recognition of the earlier uh, concept and here the molecular recognition in the metal organic framework. How bombs can be formed, that uh, bombs can be formed by the uh, self-assembly of simple organic ligands and with metal ions and uh, solid molecules. You can see here, and uh, the of the beauty behind the mobs are, they are very nice crystalline structure, well-defined surface, and it has nice pores. And uh, Yagi at all uh, is a very pioneering in this field, and as well as uh, Susumu Kitagawa as well. So they told that the the surface area of mop is so high that a football, a soccer ground uh, uh, surface area can be different, can be put into a uh, one gram of mop kind of uh, in a lecture he was uh, trying explaining. So main advantages of the mop is um, their tunable structure, crystalline nature, and designable nanopores, and uh, importantly, uh, guest accommodation and flexible nature. I will uh, come to this flexible nature and guest accommodation and I will mainly focus on this. So, as you know, that crystal, uh, we cannot uh, uh, cannot be uh, soft or cannot be elastic. But in recent years or maybe uh, 10 years back, uh, it has been shown that uh, a crystal structure, macro microscopic crystal structure, can be deformed with intake or release of guest molecules. As the schematic structure shown that this can be shape changes. So, as we do, uh, initially defined that, uh, showed that the deformable structure is very, very important for molecular recognition. So here, the close and open face is very, very important for the I mean, uh, recognition of some molecules. And here, uh, you see the, the structural opening, uh, 
uh, in a, you can call it a gate effect that when the, the clock phase is closed, the mop is closed, there is no adsorption of the gas molecule and suddenly the, uh, there is a particular, in, in particular pressure, the gas molecule comes at a time and it opens the structure and it is called gate opening pressure here. So, so with this uh, flexible nature of mops, there are a lot of uh, nice invention or you can call discoveries as well. Uh, in the next slide, uh, yeah, in next slide, Susumukitaba uh, at all showed that uh, when a particular guest uh, is incorporated in a mop, as you see in the left side, uh, the mop is the fluorescence of the mop is not so high, and when it takes the carbon dioxide, the fluorescence is enhanced. So th this means there is a cooperative interaction as well as uh, the sensing or recognition of the molecule or uh, with the synergistic effect of this incorporation of this dye molecule, DSB. So this kind of phenomena is very, very important for recognition purpose. Uh, coming to the next slide, so, so far I have talked about mobs, but here there are some special kinds of uh, name or a special kind of mobs, you can say the charged mobs. Why it is called charged mobs or charged framework? Because the framework is uh, kind of charged and negatively charged here and balance is done by the presence of the extra framework anion here for the cationic mop and the, for the anionic mop balance is done by the uh, uh, extra presence of extra framework cation so the very very uh, uh, there is a review article uh, from our group uh, which showed the uh, different facets of the ionic mops and uh, Main in, uh, advantages or main use of this kind of uh, pattern mob is that recognition and sensing, uh, magnetism, uh, pollutant trapping. So I will focus on this uh, kind of pollutant trapping, recognition of this cationic mob. I will not talk about this anionic mob. Okay. So, so come to the cationic mob. Uh, as you know, uh, there are some ligands in metal organic framework that pyrazine, purpur, bipyridine, when they, these are very, very simple ligands, and when this binds to the metal center and it forms even morphs, and the, this A minus anion can be sitting in the pores to balance the ch overall charge. There is a general method to synthesize this kind of cationic mop is that uh, when uh, we see uh, ligand solution, we take the ligand solution, this kind of ligand solution, and metal salt top, and in between there is a blank solvent. So when we keep this uh, tube for for few days or few um, one week or so, so this uh, metal salt solution. Uh, slowly diffuse to the ligand solution to this blank solution and they form crystals here. Uh, these crystals is called these crystals uh, normally we have been seen that uh, these crystals are cationic mob or cationic CP because in this case the anion is sitting inside the pores. So this process is co uh, called slow diffusion method. And this is a very, very well known as well. Um, and the features of this cationic CP or cationic mop is that uh, this, there is, you know, there is a functionality called anion free anion sitting here. So these anions can be replaced with other foreign anions. So, and uh, so that is, that is the thing, the exchangeable anions. So, if we can exchange this kind of anions that is non-harmful with the harmful anions, so we can uh, make use of this framework for hazardous anion removal or recognition process. There is an article uh, long back 2011 
uh, that the EDS ethylene diamine sulfonate uh, can be replaced by the perchlorate. So that uh, that is called sludge 21 EDS. EDS is named after this anion, and this is after anion exchange. It is called sludge 21 cell 4 cell 4 is the perchlorate after the anion exchange. You call you see here in crystallographically they have shown here. Uh, uh, and decognition of anion process in solid state is very, very important because solid state, uh, as well as in naked eye, if we see the uh, color change of the face, that will be very interesting, as well as very, very uh, demanding as well. The main source of such pollutant anions is the radioactive waste, industrial waste, and fossil fuel burning. And in uh, Christian comb, uh, in metal organic, uh, in Omar Farah at all, so the use of metal organic framework uh, for application in the emission of oxygen and cation uh, contaminated water. So, uh, and for example, I have uh, seen here, I have shown here one example um, that there are three anions, nitrates here in the framework, and when the nitrate is replaced by other um, uh, six anions. Uh, for example, azide, uh, chloride, uh, bromide, iodide, thiocyanate, you can see for different, different color. This different, different color is observed because of this uh, host case interaction and the uh, metal center is copper. So there is a um, interaction is happening. So with the different anions and giving rise to the different colors in the product. And that is called solid state anion recognition. So with this, uh, and uh, if we combine the dynamic nature or softness of the framework, so we can have that idea that how this kind of framework can change to different uh, a different state with the uh, guest induced structural change that is called coordinated guest. When it when it goes, the structure is squeezed, and when it um, weakly coordinated anion is goes. Uh, from the framework, uh, it can also change the structural reconstitution. And as well, if we uh, other things, soiling or molecular reorganization. So the responsive uh, facets or feature of cationic MOP is very, very important. And uh, this we published in a Dalton Trans perspective, and we showed that uh, this kind of uh, phenomena, the responsive nature of the cationic MOP is very important for the recognition purpose. Uh, so, main objective of this work today, I uh, will be uh, giving that uh, there are different uh, shapes of uh, size of anions. I saw here, nitrate, azide, thiocyanate, disonomide. Uh, so, this ionic mob can entrap this kind of anions and have physical property changes. So, in terms of, you can say, luminescence, readout manner. So this is an ionic, ionic mob, uh, how responds to this anion. So that's why we call it responsive nature, responsive to the ion and understanding the physical and chemical inside of this uh, framework. When this, uh, this anion, it goes in to the framework or can replace this uh, you know, initial anion with this anion, kind of this kind of anion. So, in approach, uh, I have shown here, as we you remember the initial slides, uh, this kind of anions, um, this kind of ligands can be used for the making of the uh, cationic framework or cationic mob. So we chose this kind of very, very simple ligand. And there, the ligand is interesting part of this ligand is there is a flexible part of the ligand, and there is donating side of the ligand, the metal. So the bicylating sides, at the both end and neutral internal species, which can contain cationic framework and uh, easy single step synthesis can be done by this amine and, and lyite. So the synthesis part of the ligand is very, very easy and one step. And so that's why we are making this ligand and uh, we can use utilize to uh, make cationic framework. And this ligand is well characterized with uh, uh, 1H and 13C NMR HRMS uh, techniques. 
and uh, interestingly when uh, we combine this ligand with zinc nitrate and the uh, slow diffusion method utilizing the slow diffusion method pcm uh, dichloromethane benzene and methanol uh, we got this kind of framework where we see these anions are sitting inside uh, um, inside the pores or uh, in the in the wall and the the formula unit is here shown and uh, zinc uh, l means the wall decan the methanol is coordinate perimeter centers and nitrate and gas molecules and this is the formula unit of the framework the uh, this is the repeating unit you can say formula unit you can say so here you can see the metal ion is coordinated to the two methanol so it is very important to see here i will explain later and there are three anions you can see here um, those three anions can be replaced with other anions as well so the features of the structure 1a i call this uh, structure 1a framework 1a of 1a so the partners and environment you can see the methanol is coordinate to the middle center this is very weird that methanol is coordinated to the middle center because methanol coordination has been observed that very very weak to the metal center compared to other uh, coordination uh, coordinating test and it is forming one decatonic chain and nitrate is here free and nitrate and uh, if we see in various residues of the 1d chain you can see in different color uh, how the various 1d chain is adjunct uh, uh, it's very assembled in the structures and uh, the interesting part of this uh, work is that one of the interesting part of this work is that when we took out the crystals from the mother liquor and kept in the air for maybe for a couple of hours we see the crystals habit or crystals uh, is losing solvent so fast and uh, we check uh, that uh, the cell parameter and we found a different structure completely different structure so that means that uh, the structure 1a is changed to st structure 1 when it takes the gas molecules or takes the in, in kept in air so this phase is very important that single crystal to single crystal phase change and uh, uh, just uh, having said that single crystal to single crystal phase change is not so uh, easy process because uh, during the gas change, uh, gas loss, uh, the crystal may happen to have crack inside or crack uh, on the surface. So this kind of crack crystal cannot be diffracted in XRD. So, so we have particularly minorly chose one crystal which is not having so many cracks. Or uh, so that's why it is so tricky to have this after gas loss the structure here. The, uh, as you see, air dead phase as dead phase. Yeah. So the mechanism uh, we can see here, uh, if we see the structure inside, that uh, when the this angle uh, this angle is a bit elongated when it uh, losing methanol here and when it comes water here. That means. Uh, the elongation is happening and with the liberation of the methanol and incorporation of the water. So as you see here, that MMM angle is changing and it uh, almost getting squeezed or non-porous. So here I can uh, say that uh, structure 1A changed to structure 1 by the loss of coordinated methanol and the uh, angle slightly uh, changed or just slightly elongated upon transformation. Not only this, in the structure of one, we could observe the, the same thing uh, the, as expected that uh, there is a uh, water is uh, binding here at the coordination environment and the structure organization is little changes here. As you see, the uh, pore is almost squeezed after uh, loss of gas molecules. And this is the formula unit where water comes in in place of methanol. So 
we can say that, uh, uh, we, but uh, we didn't perform the um, theoretical uh, calculations, but uh, we can say this state is very, very uh, energetically favorable uh, for that uh, um, compared to the original phase. And uh, there is also insight, uh, if we go to the insight in the ligand conformation uh, of the phase change and the unit cell parameter, there is a change, uh, obviously, you can see. And the uh, ligand conformation, you can see the original phase, the ligand is uh, the two part, two sides of the ligand almost parallel. And there is there, but uh, in the change phase, the twisting is more. and uh, uh, this is not so exactly parallel this phase so and two is uh, in the in the uh, aliphatic side is more so there is a distinct orientation changes in the ligand we can find yeah and not only this uh, when we uh, consider the four shapes uh, and changes we see uh, the four shapes uh, we can call it uh, almost oval kind of a spherical score shapes in the original case. And after change phase, uh, there is rectangle, rectangular or square kind of four shapes uh, observed after gas loss. So depending on these four shapes, it can take molecules, it can take, uh, it can recognize other phase so, as we encountered earlier. So come to the XR, XRPD pattern. Uh, that uh, when you see the structure uh, that is 1A and that is the simulated. So, and these two are simulated structure of the two phases, but experimental case, this is experimental structure. And you see there is experimental structure is quite similar to this uh, one, but there is not exactly, uh, there is uh, there is some exactly not exactly matching with the structure because in the powder phase when it grind the structure is slightly as well changing so uh, you can say that in powder phase the structure is not same exactly same as in the crystalline phase so because powder phase we have to grind with the motor pestle so then the, the soft structure can substructure can uh, change so, so PXRD patterns also uh, provide the dynamic uh, or soft behavior of the mock. And we uh, checked uh, different guests uh, when, how it responds to the different guests. So, and we, we saw that uh, for different kind of guests, for example, acetone, acetonitrile, ethanol, methanol, uh, there is a different response as encountered in the XRD pattern. So th this kind of uh, different response to the, the framework is very, very uh, unique. Uh, and you can, you can say this kind of different response can be well decoding nature of the MOF. So for example, acetone and acetonitrile having similar property or can be said hydrophobic, uh, more hydrophobic nature. So those having similar tendency, uh, similar pattern observed in the XRD, but for ethanol and methanol having similar uh, nature, hydrophilic nature, uh, we can see there are some similarity in the XRD patterns. So dividing, uh, depending on this polarity of the uh, guest, the framework is response to this, uh, uh, this kind of guest. And uh, com coming to the vapor adsorption, uh, for example, hydrophobic gas, uh, uh, larger hydrophobic gas, benzene cyclexane, the MOF is not uh, porous at all. But uh, in case of acetone and acetonitrile, the framework uh, from squeeze state to slowly open the pore. This is not, uh, this kind of pattern is not for the microporous nature. This is, this is the pore is slowly open, and this is very common in the um, sub porous mop also. And for hydrophilic gas, uh, also the structure opens slowly. And for water, uh, depending on the what, uh, depending on the size, uh, the 
uh, uptake is uh, can be correlated for water uh, it has been smaller size and for methanol the size is uh, comparatively bigger than water then ethanol size is comparatively bigger than methanol so depending on the size so the adsorption is happening here and different um, so you can say this is size selective and this is size dependent you can so adsorption nature indicates uh, also uh, structural flexibility because uh, the nature uh, when the gas molecule comes the adsorption and the the squeeze framework is slowly open and which gives uh, in also evidence the framework is soft uh, towards different gates. To the another part of the work is the as we noticed in the framework there is free anion. So we thought of exchange these free anions with other anions, and this is the simple one of the process how we do this replacement exchange or behavior of these anions. We put the crystal or crystalline powder in the anionic solution. We and we uh, chose uh, this kind of azide, thiocyanate, perchlorate, uh, dicyanamate anion. And uh, we then we do the, um, the product. We perform FTIR, XRD, and uh, found that the uh, original nitrate anion the present in the structure is being replaced the, because in the IR there are no uh, signal of the uh, nitrate you can say and there is in cursive anion you can say in azide, acyanate, perchlorate and dicenamide and, and coming to the XRD pattern uh, as we say here in the uh, 5.2 or uh, 5.2 to 10.5, uh, there is a change in the pattern for different anions. This is also can be explained um, uh, from the perspective of the structural um, softness. Because as the structure is soft, as the structure is not rigid, it can change its uh, uh, framework course towards the different anions uh, nature or towards a different anion interaction, host gradient interaction. So yeah, that's uh, that's what the structural changes is happening in XRD pattern. So that's why it, uh, it is, uh, FTR shows the complete exchange of the nitrate anion by incursive anion, and size, shape, and coordinating tendencies of each anion are different, and uh, dissimilarity of the PXRD patterns for the various Exchange solids indicates an response to of the form. And uh, coming to the reversible anion exchange, we also perform reversible uh, after the anion exchange. We uh, we took in the, put in the 0.5 molar millimolar nitrate solution and one millimolar nitrate solution, and we saw that some cases our anions are coming back. Nitrate is coming back. And some cases, nitrate are not coming back. So the, the in case chloro, uh, perchlorate and disonamide, uh, we observe that nitrates are coming back. That means the host and guest interaction. Host means the frame. Um, uh, host means uh, the framework and the cellophore and framework and the disonamide interaction is weaker. That's why it is reversible, um, reversibility observed. A strong interaction, that means uh, there is a strong interaction of the framework, aside and thysanide, uh, which gives rise to the stronger attack. Yeah. And we, we also perform the binary uh, uh, and an exchange experiments. And we observed that these two cases, uh, thiocyanate and azide, and azide and perchlorate, that uh, uh, framework is taking azide uh, from, from this combination. And here, with the azide and cellophore, framework is taking azide. And other case we see from this other mixture is observed. So this means uh, that the Reversibility and affinity test suggest that gas and affinity has 
uh, tyrosinate and then azide, uh, diacinamide and sulfur. Uh, uh, next one is the, uh, we see uh, there is a structural change as well as uh, the metal is detained. And uh, we observe initially that in the UV light, the framework is luminescence. So in the different cases, we observe the luminescence changes is observed. Uh, for example, uh, silophore and diacinamide luminescence enhancement uh, compared to the ligand or compared to the uh, original compound. Uh, other case, azide and thiocyanate, is the luminescence is quenched. And uh, as you see here in the bar diagram, that silophore and diacinamide is compared on enhancement occur, and uh, azide and thiocyanate is the quenching occurs. So, which is uh, also interesting that uh, this recognition of the anions is in terms of this uh, physical readout manner that uh, how uh, this framework is changing to the different anions and uh, it responds to in the uh, luminescence manner as you observed here. So in summary, uh, how uh, this res anion responsive phenomenal luminescence is observed Schematically has been shown here. The originally there is uh, nitrate, and when nitrate is replaced by uh, silver, the enhancement of the luminescence occurs. As you see here, uh, bright luminescence, and when it replaced by as a thiocyanate and and azide, the quenching occurs compared to this, as you see here, and when it replaced with the diacinamide, it is uh, brighter, but it uh, comparatively uh, less with the silver. And with this uh, structural responsiveness, I finish my uh, responsive nature of such an ionic mobs will give a new pathway uh, of discrimination of ionic species. And this is my past publication uh, in my PhD mostly. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Manna, for your nice presentation. Especially this MOF work is nowadays is very much interesting to all the audience. Um, there is one question for audience from Ramakrishna Haldar. Yes. He is asking one minute. Yes. What is the bulk what is the bulk density of MOF? Especially this group of material. Flexible nature of MOF can be a game changer in brown oil field. Its stable its ability to absorb of MOF uh, at a particular pressure is interesting. So yes. what is the bulk density of MOF? So I think uh, uh, but Ramakrishna Alvar is also there in uh, uh, in Webex, so he can directly ask the question. Uh, just uh, yes. Yeah, you can ask. Yes. Yeah, you can ask. I'm, not, I'm sorry, uh, your voice is not so audible. Uh, uh, yes, I'm here, RK Helder. Can you hear me? Yes yes. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, I was just going through your paper and uh, uh, the present developments which you are going uh, making, all the different uh, scientists. So, this is actually a nanoparticle. Nanoparticle? No, 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 no. This is uh, uh, MOF sites normally in the, in this paper, what I showed the uh, uh, in the micrometer size, tens of micrometer maybe, but we okay, didn't take okay. the same images. Uh, uh, so, so what is the bulk density or the specific gravity of this material? Uh, bulk density, we didn't measure the bulk density, but I think it is a good. Uh, where I can get this material. So, sorry. Uh, which are the sources? Because we are, I am myself into R and D. Okay. Of, uh, 
into uh, use of different materials for our oil and gas industry. I am in ONGC. Okay. So uh, okay. what I was thinking was uh, how can we source this material? And uh, then I would wish to have your communication number or email and uh, look, look forward to you know working in these areas. And uh, I did write one note that uh, the institutes, premium institutes and the industry players surely can make India great again in this Make in India campaign. Okay. So I would like to have uh, the source of this material, at least three or four suppliers who can supply me this. And uh, uh, what are the instruments required? And I request your help. Okay. Uh, we have uh -huh. around 12 uh, R&D institutes all over India. We have okay. uh, uh, institutes which are looking into oil and gas uh, uh, enhancement projects. We have oh. drilling arena institute. We have uh, uh, then uh, the KDMIP, which is a premier oil exploration institute. We have IRS, Reservoir Studies Institute. We have Well okay. Stimulation Institute in uh, Ahmedabad, WSS. So uh, then we have uh, INBIX, uh, NIPSEM in Goa, who, look, who look into the you know, environmental management. So there are many applications of this material, which I'm seeing. So I wish to get you all connected to these institutes, uh, work, have a communication with them. There are scientists in our organization. Sure, now, sure, sure. Yeah, now please speak. Yeah. Uh, bulk density of the material means uh, you want to mean the, when we uh, get the crystal or we get the uh, crystal in good amount uh, powder in powder form so uh, because in during measurement of the crystallography of the material we are normally getting on density in crystal density uh, yeah. so but I am not so sure about the bulk density of such kind of material, but uh, um, uh, uh, I can you look say, for this kind of. Uh, you said it's a crystalline material. Yes, yes. And uh, does it increase in size when it absorbs? Uh, uh, I can explain one thing to you that. Uh, uh, during crystalline, um, uh, when a crystalline material, uh, we uh, work in uh, the, we can work in, in the uh, structural level, I mean, microscopic structural level, not in uh, uh, crystalline domain level. So that is one, one aspect, uh, because uh, in crystal, uh, in crystal, if we have a structural change, that is because uh, I can say I can say one thing that a crystal is composed of lot of unit cells, and lot of unit cells having a, uh, a problem need a structural pattern. So, so my um, I can I can tell you that uh, a crystal uh, shape change is we cannot observe here because there are other kind of material already and uh, other kind of uh, uh, small molecules material, small molecules, organic small molecules, which is very, very elastic. Uh, recently, they can show elasticity. But this kind of framework material, crystalline, uh, uh, a crystal shape deformation is not observed yet. Uh, whatever I can see, but my my case, what I what you see, that is structural uh, in the unit cell level or the uh, uh, structural level, microscopic structural level, there is a change. There is change, but I am also looking for that how a crystal can be soiled, how a crystal total crystal can be soiled. You understand okay, my point? I think into, you are into basic research. And uh, I am talking in terms of application research. So yeah, 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 yeah. I've done some experiments on uh, its uh, ability to store gas 
say LNG and gas, so that it can become a future transporter of LNG, uh, and we can store yeah, it. That can be possible, uh, but uh, we checked nitrogen and CO two adsorption. Yes. But it was uh, very weak because, as you see, the structure is very, very um, uh, squeezed after uh, the losing of the gas molecules. So, in the structural level, uh, the gas adsorption capacity of this uh, framework is very, very less. But okay. there are other ex are other other material already in the literature. Uh, those can is very capable uh, to absorb a lot of. Uh, a lot of porosity they have, and they can absorb a uh, mode of gas molecules as well. Thank you. There will be other people who will be like to talk to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. OK, there is one question from uh, Dr. Mandal. So uh, Dr. Mandal, can uh, you ask? Yeah, can yeah, yeah. Can you, can you hear me, Dr. Manna? Yes, sure. Yeah, sure. this is Tapas. This is Tapas. Yeah, just. I think around slide yes, number yeah. 21 or so, you have tried to show your single crystal to single crystal transformation. And there is a powder X-ray of the material also. Yes. So, uh, yes. If you can back to the slide or if you remember, yeah. So the thing is that when you see that your the, the experiment you carry out uh, with the powder sample or single crystals, so you do a structure which is single crystal, I mean, like a, you know, after you remove the guest molecules or the solvent, so there is a crystal structure, and before there is a crystal structure. Now, when you make the powder, so it is the powder of which one? Yeah, the good, good questions. So, uh, can you see the slide 21? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, I will explain. Yeah, so you see the uh, Top, uh, bottom part of the pattern that is one a simulated right uh, are you listening so one a simulated means um, this structure is uh, adopted this pattern is adopted from this uh, uh, from this uh, you can say, uh, you can say uh, right Uh, okay, and uh, if you see this one, one simulated is adopted from this as dried after gas loss, and uh, one A is adopted from this uh, this one. So because so when we took the crystal out of this layer uh, out of these uh, tubes. And uh, after keeping for maybe two two and a half hour or two hour, we uh, just grinded the crystal, and we checked the XRPD, and we observed that, and we anticipated earlier that this one experimental should exactly match with the one simulated, because uh, as this phase is already transferred to this one, uh, there is. There should be uh, uh, no mismatching, but we see there is some peaks still not agreeing with this pattern. So that means that uh, there is uh, in powder form the structural changes may also happen, but we that time we didn't uh, do all the uh, I mean, uh, what you can say, um, we didn't do the exact uh, or so we anticipated that the in structural uh, powder form of the crystal uh, also may happen some structural change as this framework is very, very sensitive to gas loss because, you know, the mechanical pressure also losing gas molecules. So yeah. that's what the structural changes. Yeah. I, I got because the moment you said a guest law, because that is the clue, probably I, it was actually in my mind. So yes. if you have if you have looked at the composition, see, because you know, when you say guest loss, then you need to know the composition. So exactly. there is exactly. a composition change in the powder form, like when you break it. So, so 
so that gas laws and how many are there and where they are filled actually will give some you know some peaks appearing or some new peaks i mean some peak vanishing or some new peak appearing so probably that is one yeah. thing i will just like to like comment on which you can probably look at and same thing you will find when you go to your last slide when you have six five six gas molecules and you see that for some of them you know the reversibility is there you are able to exchange it back with the nitrate but for someone you are not able to do it so there are also you know if you look at the powder form and the in a crystalline form a1 or 1a you will probably see a change in the composition that is kind of my comment probably if you have yes, not yes, looked yes. into and tg yes, yes. tg taking it can actually if it is possible to dissolve without breaking the structure or something if you find out a stability regime where these gas molecules can be taken out or put it back so that can mm -hmm. give you also idea you know the yeah, transformation yeah, 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 yeah. more mechanistic in kind uh -huh. of transformation because your powder yes, is not yes, matching yes, yes, generally, yes. generally if you see lot of mof literature you know your single crystal data you simulate it you get back you know the powder data that you one can just record yeah. it by exactly, exactly, exactly. that is a very common thing okay and okay. uh, I, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we also thought uh, just my on on uh, this uh, pattern one experimental can be indexed uh, to get the initial pattern so that can be also be done okay thank you thank you uh, for the nice okay there is one question from vishesh nath he said that it was a nice presentation can you carry out some r and d on li liquid polymer to be used for fluid loss control in drilling fluid in HPHT area. Can I repeat uh, the question? Yes. Can you please repeat? Uh, yes. Can you carry out some R&D on liquid polymer to be used for fluid loss control in drilling fluid in HPHT area? Liquid polymer? Ah, liquid okay. polymer to be used for fluoride fluid loss controlling control in drilling fluid in hpht area uh, how what is the meaning of the hthd area i am just listening first time sorry maybe something related to uh, i think that is high, high, high pressure high temperature i think hth high what is that percentage HP, 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 maybe ah high pressure high temperature high temperature area yes yes how uh, uh i am not sure about how high high temperature it is because the mop having thermal issue also as well uh thermal stability should be because this mop are uh, not so highly thermally stable so yes and a high pressure stability uh yeah uh just uh let me know one thing um i i, I can uh, tell one thing the high pressure um there are some mobs uh, we already explained um sorry we already experienced that in high pressure uh, the mop structure uh, i think cannot sustain because the if the mop is soft pore having soft pore the mop structure will drop uh, definitely in high pressure as well um yeah but uh, there should be some other rigid framework which can sustain high pressure or high temperature as well. I, uh, yeah, that's my answer. Maybe I'm not okay, so sure there about is, There is one more question from Professor Kausi Ghosh. So, uh, ah, yeah, sure. Ghosh, can you ask? Diplab, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Uh, nice to see you, you know. Yeah, student. thank you, sir. And uh, I hope Arijit is also there. I remember your Basis and all. Anyway, yes, I'm here. Yes. Okay, you know, you you showed one zinc uh, MOF, uh, and the synthesis was very interesting. That you put the two, uh, uh, these two bipyridine kind of binding, a little yes. bit apart, and then yes. you said that the synthesis was by slow evaporation, slow diffusion, right? Yes. So can you elaborate, uh, like, uh, can you go to, I think, next to next slide? I think, uh, can you see the slide, sir? Uh, this is slide number nine. Uh, number Not number nine. There is like, you know, you said the synthesis is very simple. And then after that, you put zinc. 
and then you did uh, slow this one maybe yeah the pre uh, maybe this one okay okay it is fine okay so you see you are like what is the you know the strategy is very interesting looks like so i just want to or i'm interested to know slow means how much slow how many days i mean what you do basically yeah yeah i explain i explain uh, yeah. yeah so we take uh, the ligand l in uh, uh, this ligand is highly soluble in uh, dichloromethane so uh, we take a tube uh, almost diameter should be uh, not so high uh, the tube is uh, we first uh, with the micro pipette we add the ligand solution uh, with the dcm uh, for example 1 ml then we put uh, slowly uh, in, in inclined manner we added 1 ml of benzene though i know benzene adding uh, uh, working with benzene is uh, not so uh, easy yeah so then uh, we added a methanolic solution of zinc nitrate uh, maybe it is 0.1 millimolar yes um, so then uh, we kept uh, we kept uh, the tube with paraffin capped uh, just we kept the paraffin so that methanol cannot come out so easily uh, and then we kept uh, the tube in a sand bath and uh, just uh, an undisturbed manner and we observed uh, after few days maybe four days we started to see some nucleation in the in between and that nucleation uh, it will be that means the crystal is uh, started growing and then we see the after one week or maybe eight days 10 days we see uh, bigger lumps of crystal is coming out in the middle and uh, in the this slide uh, I explained the det uh, detailed technique. This blank solvent is very, very necessary because otherwise the metal salt solution will come so fast here, it will form precipitate. So as we know, uh, as we need to have the uh, crystal structure, so there is the gap between other solvents. And uh, in the same time, uh, we checked the miscibility of this uh, solvent as well, because this solvent should uh, should be uh, slightly or maybe miscible, uh, moderately miscible with the benzene as well. Yes. Okay. So this uh, this is a three solvent system rather than we use it, but we use two two kind of for our slow diffusion. But you are using like three here uh, to make it more slow, right? Yes. 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 Uh, you can also you can also refer some paper from Nature Protocol. Uh, here I can show this Nature Protocol from uh, Fujita Sensei paper, Fujita, uh, Makoto Fujita. Yeah, they also use uh, this kind of technique to grow uh, large cage molecules, so metal cage molecules. So, okay. yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Very interesting. I really enjoyed both of your talks, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for attending you our lesson. Yes. Uh, thank you, Biplav, for your nice presentation. And uh, if there is thank no you so much, question, sir. if there is no more question, I can hand over the mic to our HRD, uh, so he may conclude the session. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Prasanjit Kar, for carrying this session. And it was a wonderful session uh, highlighting the synthesis and usefulness of MOF materials. I hope that the audience got benefited from these lectures. I would like to thank the speakers, Dr. Arjit Malik and Dr. Piblab Manna. They, have, they are doing good and then they have done a very wonderful presentation. And I, with this, you know, uh, thanks note, I would like to conclude this session. And I request all the participants to join uh, in the session number four today evening at 4 p.m. All the best. See you in the Thank evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.